by tomorrow night. Uh -huh. well, how's the work going so far? Well, it's been a metamorphosis of preconceptions moving into reality. And uh, being in Bella Greece, it's been um, an uphill struggle fighting with the idea of clay, which seems to be predominant here. So I tried to use that in. So we went to the next stage and worked something more familiar, which is plaster and uh, stone. And um, things have all pretty quite well once I started back to that. But uh, the time frame is very tight now because it <laughs> takes so long to dry and work the sand afterwards. So even that is going to be a bit of a difference for me. Usually I like to sand things so they're very, very smooth and then um, with the intention of digitizing them for stereophotography. But in this instance I'm going to be um, just addressing the basic forms and um, doing an applique of different materials. So uh, that's what you're seeing here. And uh, this particular piece it's the biggest one. It still has some fun it's the side. And I had to reinforce the base today because it's falling over. So now it's stronger and waiting for that to dry, and then I can turn it upside down and do the inside. And I believe that one's going to be covered in sand. And these two will be covered in gold leaf. And this one. I don't know if I can put it in anything, but it might be clear wax. That one might be brown wax. This one, I have no idea. These are little masks I made that pretty much broke. But then I covered them in a um, grout, which needs a second coat, obviously, because they got plaster on it. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to be mounted in this configuration over here. Which I built out of plaster. And I'm going to be putting uh, some grout in there as well and more plaster, and that's just going to be on a stand. <coughs> the stone carving is something I got done for years and left and went back to. So this is in progress, it's just a girl's face. Mm. It's uh, got a few more hours to, to finish. So what about the ideas behind the work? I mean, you were saying that you know you, you change from one medium to another partway through. Did were the ideas? Did the ideas change along with that? Did well, you have to rethink yeah, everything? Yeah. Well, for some reason, I went back to figurative work when I started using clay, which I liked. It was um, I made these molds and pieces which broke because I didn't have the right shims. Finding materials here has been um, difficult also. I had to go to Paris to get my tools. Which took a whole day of traveling. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy that I got them, but I didn't get shims because at the time I wasn't thinking that far ahead. So, um, I love abstraction because it's about pure form and the form is everything that's what sculpture is. It's really my, an expansion of a microscopic concept. I believe, I mean, lots of people don't believe this, but I believe that every artist creates a somewhat of a self-portrait in every piece. And a lot of people have told me the, the white plaster work reminds them of bones or interior spaces and their mm. bodies and that's a possibility. Um, I haven't done enough investigation into that to, to know if that's accurate, but uh, I certainly feel that it is a reflection of my internal feelings and um, internal versus external the facial expressions that come out in the figurative work. 
And uh, sometimes it can, becomes a little more figurative. For example, this is an abstraction of a client view. So, uh, it's I would say that's a Picasso influence there. Oh, really? Picasso lived in Valerie's. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I go, it's Picasso this, Picasso that, so I think that's where that came from. And, um, Is that normal for something to start off as, a, as figurative, as fairly definite, and become something much more abstract in the process? Do you, is that the way you normally work? Or? Well, because I have always done figurative work, I, I believe there is a crossover that I allow to emerge. I don't resist it when I see that it's happening. Mm. It's obviously something that I'm really thinking about a lot, and then it just, then I realize when I'm doing it that that's what it is. These, this piece and this one, which is still in progress, needs to be stood up. This is what I call um, blind flight. And uh, there's a lot of pigeons around here. <laughs> so I, I think I've uh, worked on that. And it's also um, just the way I think about myself right now. I'm going somewhere, but I have no idea where it is. <laughs> And uh, I don't know, it's just things erupt, and that's how I come about doing things. I mean, they're all pretty organic forms. I mean, mm -hmm. they all look like they could be from something that's not completely abstract. And yeah, so. well, I guess that's what I am too. I really like the human form, it's very interesting to me. And, um, I don't intend to make it super organic. I've been known to do something highly geometric as well. So. Like the mountain installation? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the uh, tetrahedrons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, um, I guess at this point, I'm, I'm more, maybe being more, more organic. I don't know what that means exactly. but mm. uh, Maybe because we're living in this really strong grid. Buildings are really tall and narrow, and everything is so geometric. In the, in the, so I seem to have reacted to that in the opposite way. Mm. And making these organic forms seems to be my response. I think, perhaps, I'm guessing. But mm. Although, you know, that formation on the floor is definitely mm. geometric. You know, it's, a lot of, it's something that I've, I feel comfortable with as well. So do you work with a, like, do you have a, a starting point or an idea or, or yeah, themes? Yeah, I, I start with the material. So this is some uh, chicken wire underneath. And then I take, you can see on the floor, the cotton dish towels. And soak them in plaster and cover the chicken wire with that. And then put more plaster coats on until it comes to the form that I want. And um, I wanted to make something bigger, so that's how that came about. And these are this one. This one on the other side. I, I really wanted it to be about movement more than anything else. There's um there's no right or wrong side to these pieces. There is obviously this one, but. I really like that they can be turned on various sides, and that's thinking ahead to the stereolithography where it's a virtual sculpture that can be configured in every, many different ways, and the output can be in any material. That's why plaster, I'm really comfortable with plaster because it allows me the freedom to evolve a, f a complex form, and then it can be eventually put into a, a wood, glass, metal, whatever the uh, client wants. Why do, why, why do you have that part of the process? Why do you want to you know, digitize it and then output it as something completely different? Uh, because I, I um, put a lot of work into it and it seems to make sense that you can have a multiple of something that more than one person can have. And I like the idea of virtual work that can be sent all over the world so a client can 
have the sculpture in another place when I'm somewhere else. Um, I also like the technology of the digitizing process, although my work doesn't easily lend itself to that because there are voids and intricate um, incisions into the space, and that's something that I have to develop with the, the engineers to, uh, to make it happen. Mm. So it's um, something I started thinking about back in 1996. I uh, had the opportunity of going to Monterey, California and working with the engineers that developed some of the technology for digitizing. And uh, it's called Cyberware. And um, they um, did some digitizing that I eventually had exhibited in a, a group show called Digital Investigation Differential Space at the Tech Gallery at Simon Fraser University. So it was, um, that was a two step process. The second step was provided by 3D Systems. And then I left it for a while for a lot of different reasons and started to be thinking about it last year, last summer, when I went to Atelier Celix in Quebec. And the residency there um, was step one, some work I created. And the digitizing exploration happened at the form lab at the University of Montreal. Just a little bit of exploration with it that wasn't anything finalized. She just had an opportunity to be involved in a workshop there. And uh, then more things happened and I came here. So um, I'm still thinking about that process and that's the long-term goal. But in the meanwhile, I'm developing the form vocabulary. As, um, I just want to push the forms in, in the furthest directions they can without corrupting the integrity of the piece. That's a really important aspect for me to see how much the work can balance while stretching out. And uh, I guess that's really one of the goals when I'm starting the work is how far can I take the, take the materials. Before they, I mean, like physically? Yeah, before they physically or? break yeah. or physically don't fit. Working with the plaster, there's <coughs> all kinds of nuances that happen just working with the materials. They don't mix the plaster well, there's little pockets here and lumps. Or here's the little bits of the cloth coming through. <coughs> Normally I would cover that again in another coat, but in this instance, because of the time shortage and also the fact that I'm covering it, um, I can just gesso over those little bits and um, whatever I'm covering it with will cover up that problem. Mm -hmm. In this particular instance, you can see that it's really smoothed out, but there's still little glitches, little bits here and here. And normally I would spend, I don't know, two or three more days sanding it, so it's really, really smooth. But, because I'm probably going to cover it in wax, show up. And uh, these are just fun things I'm going to add to it. <laughs> you mentioned uh, earlier that you're interested in movement. Which, the, um, the concept of movement, yeah. Mm, uh, in, in what way? I mean, it seems that like sculpture, it's, it's a, you know, the object is, is frozen, you know. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, that's, that's an interesting uh, paradigm controversy, I guess. Um, I always loved the act of dancing and not being a dancer, I suppose the concepts that are created within the movement of the dancer is something that I felt I could demonstrate within a piece. Um, the challenge of the form within space is really important um, and the act of dancing certainly provides movement that is always moving, changing, and whereas I can freeze it and show it in a, a more contemplative state. So you have the image in your mind and you 
of some dancing words. This is something that you can take your time to examine. Each has its place. And, uh, I would hope that my work would uh, be alive enough that it doesn't seem static, that it can um, be thought of in many different uh, perceptions just by walking around it or a different light or a different position in the room. Sculpture, I believe, should challenge the space of the room. It should address it and also uh, be self-explanatory, but not only that, I think that it should challenge static objects to the point where um, the work becomes an important statement. And um, it's really hard to do that in exterior spaces because there's so much going on. But interior spaces are less problematic. And, um, so I, I prefer my work in interior spaces, even if it's just a garden. Why do you feel that it has to interact with the space that it's in? And do, does that mean that the space it's in is part of your work? Sometimes it is. Sometimes I will create a work just for space. Um, sometimes um, I feel that the work, if it's work, if it's doing its job, should um, make things be rearranged around it, or at least recognizing what the work is about should uh, re reset the person's space to um, to reflect on. Maybe that's um, confusing, but um, the work should be about something, and if it's doing what it's supposed to do, then then of course your the room shall, will be challenged by that. So when you say the work should be about something, is there something in particular that you want people to take away, like when when you're finished with a piece, do you have an idea of what it is that it's about, and you want somebody to understand that, or yeah, it, but it's all nonverbal. Okay. The work is about what you can't say. I do write also, and that is its own form, its own media. This is about what you can't say in words. It should be about that. If it doesn't do that, then it's not a success. But that was that's my goal. That's, this is. Thing. This is about something that I cannot say, but I feel very deeply. Hmm. It's it just erupts out of me, and I have to do it. It's important to me to make it visual, and that's how I end up making sculpture. Well, given then, perhaps maybe phrasing this another way, given that it's it's something nonverbal that you're 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 trying to communicate, do you expect or do you, do you hope that the people viewing your work, whatever it is that they take away from it, will that correspond with the feelings that you think are in it? Um, possibly. I mean, everybody will have a different response because they are who they are. And, um, but I hope they respond in some way. Mm. That it is an emotional response, an intellectual response. It's really not, it doesn't matter one way or the other to me. You may fill them with words, or it may just leave them with a sense of, of understanding something or rethinking something. But for me, it's a non expression of something that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. I would say place really affects how I work. And uh, in, in this former barn, um, I felt very comfortable here just because of the floors and the ambiance, the you know, couple hundred dollars hundred-year-old doors and the fact you can hear the neighborhood in the background, all those things. Um, I love the sense of history, but um, in one way I felt a little bit intimidated too because it's this potter studio and I just have to have blinders to that, so. How would that affect you? Well, by working the wrong materials for me in the beginning. I wasted a lot of time doing that. Um, but on the other hand, maybe it wasn't a waste because I really um, ex 
accepted what I could do as a result. And instead of resisting it, I embraced that. So in what way then did this particular place affect the work that you made? This, this work here, uh, I, I felt that I could finally feel energized. Um, it's, it's intimidating being in history. I come from a place, Vancouver, where history is, of the people living there is very, very young. There's the First Nations people whose history is very deep, but the immigrants don't have much history. It's Canada is just over 100 years old. Vancouver is just over 100 years old. So, it's, um, I was able to connect with the history here, and somehow it made my work more organic, which is interesting to me too, because I don't know how that came about exactly, but I allowed it to happen. I think there's a little playfulness also, something that's um, it's not uh, it's gestural for one thing, and the curvilinear aspect a joyful expression. It's um, if you think about the two halves here in this piece, they're almost um, capturing something. Uh, it, it's a twisting and turning of, a, of two thoughts that are parallel to each other, and it's, well, it's just a talk, but. To, that's one of my favorite This one, I particularly love. It's, it feels to me both internal and external. Do you uh, take inspiration from particular forms, or do they just emerge naturally? I mean, no, no, no. I don't use nature at all. No. No. It's all got to do with my psyche. Whatever, whatever that is. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm thinking about things about what's happening to me in my regular life. And uh, somehow the work just takes hold and kind of a remembrance that no matter what's happening, that there's something that I can do that is a positive force. And the work has all, it, it can't, for me, I can't do something really negative or it'll just break. How do you mean by negative? Well, like when I'm reviewing a work, I always look for something that's positive about what the artist was trying to do. And there's always some redeeming factor in everybody's work. And I have to remember that in myself, that there's always something positive that I can think about myself that is worth putting into a sculpture. And I, I cannot articulate it in any other way by, but by making sculpture. So that's why I do it. Mm -hmm. So do you feel then that these pieces are, are finished? Because normally there'd be another stage in the process, wouldn't there? There'd be a yeah. whole digitizing. Yeah, well, that's true. But they will be finished in the state that they're going to be exhibited in. Um, and just because it's a secondary process afterwards doesn't mean that I can't consider them finished. Mm -hmm. they, they have their own life just by existing. In fact, once it's digitized, it does take on a different form because of the digital smoothing out, the, um, the scanning process and the translation into a 
digital drawing, three-dimensional drawing, will affect the piece to become a, a different piece. So this is this will definitely be finished in its own own right, mm. which I like. You know, I like things to exist in real life, and I also like digital work. So it's it's fun. So finally, then, what were your thoughts on Valerie's and on the residency? Here? What did you take from it? Hmm. Well, it's a mystery how I why I came, and I seem to have that opportunity, and I did come, and people have been fab fabulous. I really enjoyed meeting everybody, and living in the same house as two other artists has been fun too because it's you know you don't have to explain yourself. Everybody understands, and that's a, that's a good thing. And um, you know, having having my own studio has been great. Um, I uh, I enjoyed exploring outside of Valerie's can and Antique. Went as far as Italy a little bit and uh, Bonn. Bandol. So there was a little bit of opportunity to see the Côte d'Azur, the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, I'm not a touristy person, and that in itself was a challenge just being that milieu. Uh, I can see why all the painters and sculptors that lived in this area, and there are many saw what they saw and produced the work that they produced now that I've been here. The color is just like last night walking outside this door just after twilight. The, my God, it was a Van Gogh painting. It was that sky where he sat on the cafe and the, pebble, the cobblestones were there and the light from the lantern was that yellow and of course it was gas at that time. But it, it just <laughs> but it was wonderful. and then I, I had such a deep appreciation of that. Or looking out a window and seeing all the the, the houses that still exist at the time that Matisse was painting. And of course, we've got Picasso. <laughs> his pottery's everywhere. His face is everywhere. <laughs> his signature is everywhere. And um, you know, it just there's a certain reassurance of being in this place. And, I perhaps won't know its true effects for many years to come, but um, here I am. Okay, great. Well, for the record, state your name. My name is Deborah Lana. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>